of the albums that I can listen to anytime from start to finish is the Third Eye Blind Red album. Hmm. What about uh, 311? Not a whole album. No. That's kind of like trying to listen to a whole Sugar Ray album. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, it wasn't quite there, you know. Did you go to Sugar Ray? Together. We, we did, didn't we? Sugar Ray, yeah. <laughs> but listen, we were sleeping. Yes. Asleep through Maroon 5. Didn't even know. Oh, yeah, no. But we, we did, we're like, what was it? This guy sounds like a girl. When's this going to be over? <laughs> Who's going to see Matchbox 20? That's, that's not how I felt when I heard it. When that guy came out, I was like, what in the world is this? It was. Do you remember when you stood in line for 87 hours and you, we were, you were holding turf right in front of where Bono was going to be staying. Landlocked. Yes. Landlocked. Between some YouTube. It looked like, the, looked like the Oklahoma land run. <laughs> And I was there so early. But, Stakes in the ground. But that's the first time I had ever heard of the Black Eyed Peas or the song I Got a Feeling. And that place came to life. How many how many people were there? What's the what's Sooner Stadium home? Well, I don't know. We were on the ground. The whole I, ground was full. I think they I think they said Sooner Stadium holds, if I remember right. 70,000. Does it seem right? Yeah. Yeah. So, Sooner Stadium jam packed. And this is when U2 was running the Claw. Remember? Oh, yeah. The Claw, the right? 360 the, tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 360 tour. Yeah. That's There's cool. nothing else like that thing. I haven't seen anything like it. So, the center stage. The center stage spin? The center stage spun because it was the 360. Okay. Then, then the screens. Oh yeah, like the honeycomb. Honeycombed down like the beehive. all the way. Yeah. And was the LED. Yeah. And had everything on it, and then at times would open up. Mm hmm. And then there was the bridge that was moving. The bridge that was over the top. Yeah. Of the inner circle. Yeah. The part that was bananas to me is when I looked up and realized there were dudes all up in the claw. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Pulling levers. Yeah. Like the great powerful laws. Yeah. Yeah. That was wild. It's a good one. That was wild. That was a... Uh... So we saw Black Eyed Peas together. Mm -hmm. Did anybody else open for Black Eyed Peas before Black Eyed Peas? Because on that tour, Snow Patrol was opening. Snow I don't, Patrol. I don't think so. I think it was Black Eyed Peas then YouTube. Yeah. I think all, all I remember is Black Eyed Peas. I had heard. Dude, of we Black got a lot of concerts in together, don't we? Yeah, we got a few. Sure. Yeah, pretty big ones. Big ones. I mean, when Black we Eyed Peas. You too. When we see Matchbox Twenty, they were a big deal. <laughs> they were a big deal, <laughs> and they were good. Yeah, they were good. Sugar Ray's weird. Yeah, but it's not terrible. No. But listen, uh, my Maroon Five experience was my Maroon Five experience was different. Yeah, I think that I think the thing is for me is I was late and we were coming in in the middle of it. Okay, they were already going. Okay, yeah. okay, all right. So the place is dark. We're at, is it uh, Sprint Center? Kansas City. Yeah, Sprint Center. So we're at Sprint Center. We go in. Listen, when Maroon Five came. Comes out on stage. <laughs> it was funny. It looked like a garage band. They brought a, they brought a drum kit and I, I don't know, a bass, a snare, a tom, two cymbals. I don't know. It was like the most piece of crap looking setup in the world. It's, they may as well just brought their own amp and their freaking uh, dad's Fender Stratocaster. That, mm. And they stepped out and I was like, what in the world? There's about 50 people down in the front. There's about 50 people down in the front. Now, the place was packed to see Matchbox 20. Mm -hmm. But there's about 50 people down in the front that when 
Maroon 5 walks out. I don't even know who this group was. This group walks out on stage. They set their stuff up. And people are holding up poster board signs. And you can see there's like, I'm serious, 50. There's 50 people who've ever heard of this band. And they fire into the songs. And that opening freaking song. What was that song called? She will be loved. Nope that it, that was that that was one of them. But it, whatever the opening song was, I mean, I know, I know what you're talking about. That'll brush up on my maroon five. Uh, yeah, it's been a while. But hey, when he started out and Adam Levine freaking hit that note and started in, I come up out of my chair, like everybody's sitting there. Nobody cares about this, you know. They're just waiting to see Mashbox. This is a garage band. Yeah. No one cares. And when those 50 people are holding these posters, I'm like, all their cousins and their moms and dads, they all came out to the show. And he starts in, and I stood up out of my chair. I was like, who in the world is this? Mm. Like, this is crazy. That first song, right? Out, I mean, it was just, I mean, lightning. I don't remember anything else after that, but he fired into that one, and I was like, Dude, that's one of those. Of course, then it's a couple years later. Mm. You start hearing that stuff on the radio all the time. Mm -hmm. And then you never stop hearing it on yeah. the radio. Yeah. But we saw Maroon 5, Sugar Ray. Sugar Bucks Ray. 10. I think they pushed their whole mini bar out on stage when they came out. I know. They now, were more obsessed with that than they were playing music. Now, let me, take us, let me take us back. I hope you were at this one. I don't remember if you, but I think you were. We were in Joplin, Missouri. I didn't go. You didn't make it. Mm -mm. Bone thugs and harmony. I didn't go. I didn't go. Something. I probably had to stay up and write a paper that night or something. I don't know. What we went going. to Bone Thugs and Harmony. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's move on. Yeah. We, we can talk about after hours. After hours. Here we are. The homilist. Right here in the Berry Hill Cabin. Yeah. Berry Hill Cabin after hours. Yeah. That's yeah, a good one. Uh, so last two last two episodes. Cheat codes. Mm -hmm. We have people send in questions. Next five or ten years, what are a few things you wish you could navigate? Get that, get that squared away before, before you get there. A couple of things. Maybe you got some fear on. Maybe you got some questions about. Maybe there's some things that you you haven't, like you haven't even you haven't even processed through. You think about like what's it look? What's the workforce look like? What's college look like? Um, what about uh, having kids, getting married, this kind of mm -hmm. stuff. And so people fired off. Well, what's, what was awesome is we figured we planned two episodes. Mm -hmm. We planned, we'll do two episodes of answering These questions. are going to have to take place periodically. I think so too. Because it's just too, it's too good. I mean, you remember having the, I wish somebody would have said, hey, do you got any questions about what's coming out? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, you know, so the last uh, Cheat Coast 2, there was a whole lot of relational type mm -hmm. questions. Like romantic sure. yeah, relational sure. type questions. Sure. And and just to just to kind of pick up right there, I had a really good question from from my friend Drew. He's a, a college student. He uh, uh, just a servant, just a guy. Just he's pursuing the Lord, and he asked me a really good question. And uh, we sat and and we talked through it for a while. But man, I'm just I'm just curious what your what your thoughts are on it here a little bit. This okay. is the question: is is as a single guy desiring companionship? desiring romantic companionship in my life, but striving to fully submit and pursue the Lord in all my ways. When is it, when, or is it okay to just kind of check, check something and see if it's there with, with a, with a female. All right. So I don't know Drew. Is that what yeah. you said? Drew? Yeah. Isn't it? All right. I, I don't know Drew. I mean, this question sounds like it's been... And he told me, this isn't for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's what I would say. Uh, it sounds like this question, like he churchified this question a little bit. He did. He did, but 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 he was completely sincere. This okay. is 100% okay. right. sincere. That's a great, that's a, that's a great one. That's a great one. Uh, He's like, I don't, I don't want to be on, on a highway of pursuing God. Oh, okay, and and see something at an off ramp, and be like, I just got to go check because he's like, what if I go check and then it's ten years before I'm back on this highway? He's like, because I feel like that might happen sometimes. 
Well, and I said, if they, if they come back on, <laughs> yeah. you know, if, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, you, we're talking second biggest decision you make in your life. Yeah, I would agree. You know, I would agree. What did you tell him? Did you? I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing. No, here's what I do. Like, good luck, bud. Yeah, I don't know. Man. I don't know. <laughs> Look, I'm still ain't made my way back up here. <laughs> yeah. no, that's good. No, I, t- I told him I was like, dude, you got to stay. You got to stay on the highway. Mm. You got to stay on the highway. And um, there will be something there. If 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 if, if that's what's in your future, you you want to find something there in that path. Because if you don't find it in that path, and you find it someplace else. It's so easy to become unequally yoked. Oof. So, so easy. And if, if you're on that highway, then whatever else is on that highway, they're already headed the right spot. Yes. If, if you take if you take an off ramp, they're not where they need to be right now. There you go. And that's what I told. Them. I don't think there's a better answer than that. Yeah. I don't think there's a better answer than that. Stay on the road. Mm-hmm. Just stay on the road. I mean, here, this is just me, but I think about you want an experience, you want an experience, and I know there's going to be people, people are different about this, but I wanted to be fully convinced that this is the person I'm supposed to marry. I wanted to be, I wanted to be fully convinced because if I was fully convinced in my own mind, what I thought was if I ever, if, if I ever walked out of this relationship, I would have to walk out of it knowing this is who God brought me. Mm. Like that's what I wanted. Mm-hmm. And I know that sounds a little dark, but if I'm going to walk out, it's not going to be because I'm questioning, maybe I married the wrong person. Maybe I'm falling in love with somebody else. Maybe I, it's like, no, God put this person in your path and it was abundantly clear. Don't leave the highway. Mm-hmm. You're doing 85 on the interstate and somehow you and homegirl meet up in the course of life and you build a relationship. No, I think what you said is hundred percent right. It's well, and not, and not, I mean, as a guy, she's supposed to be following you, not you following her. Oh yeah, that's good. You, you're following yeah, God. Good. She's following yeah, you. That's good. You know, that's good. And because if you get that backwards, sometimes it's, I, I mean, I see guys go through pain, Dude. trying to, you know, reestablish that. And it can come across so weird and you know well here's the other part here's what i think about long term don't come off the highway to go and meet her because i think you i think you cancel some of your own power in the relationship and you start a bad trend and a bad habit of peeling off i'm gonna go where she goes Mm. i'm gonna go where she goes yeah and then somehow, if you're a Christian man and, you, and you're going to say, I'm going to go leave my family in the future, and she says, I think what we want to do is this. So I'm all about talking. I'm all about having a conversation. I'm all about collaborative work. I mean, my wife and I are the same way. We have collaborative work. We sit down and have a dis- make a decision about something. But the role and the responsibility for the man in a marriage is that you lead your family. Mm-hmm. And you don't want to get into that habit of peeling off. I think what you said is, is perfect. You don't want to get in that habit of peeling off the road and going over here and, and doing what. Listen, there's going to be billboards. Drew, there's going to be billboards everywhere uh, to stare at. There's going to be there's gonna be car lots. Turn oh, here. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be blinking signs. There's going to be big orange signs yeah. that say detour. Yeah. There's going to be there's gonna be a lot of that stuff out there. A lot of that stuff out there. Yeah. But those are compromises. Absolutely. Yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. You, you stay the course because if God brings that person along, beside you while you're on the interstate while you're on the freeway and you're able to build a relationship as you're continuing to pursue the goals and the things that god's put out in front of you dude, that's that's so much better now you don't have to now you don't have to write the ship once you tried to dock it and then back it out and then you do now you're doing a 16 point turn in yeah. the middle of a you know an overpass trying yeah. to you can't do it. it's no good it's yeah. no good. You stay the course, but I can hear it. I can hear that, but man, it's lonely out here. It's a long, uh, yeah. lonely. I mean, that was part of our conversations. That's yeah, a long, lonely road. Yeah. That's true. 
I can tell I can tell you this though. There's a lonelier road. Mm -hmm. There's a lot lonelier road. And that's that's the one where you get off the highway to go check in on a thing. You play house for a minute. It doesn't work out. You never make it out back out on the highway. And mm -hmm. you just keep playing house and doing all this stuff. It's no bueno. Mm -hmm. Well, it's kind of like that that uh that group in the book of Ezra. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they've been there for years. Yeah. Just working, doing what God has asked them to do. Yeah. You know, re establishing community. Trapped in Babylon. Yeah. Building the temple. And they're lonely and they're bored. Is it with, now the, the group in Ezra, they were trapped in Babylon? No, they were out of Babylon. Oh, they're out of Babylon. They, they, uh, so they had Persian support to rebuild the temple. And they were sent back. They were rebuilding Solomon's okay, temple. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha, in, gotcha. In Jerusalem. And they, they intermarried. They intermarried some of the mm -hmm. some of the rule. Okay, I remember rule wives yeah, from yeah, the area. Yeah, yeah. and you which know. I think there was a I think there was a rule about that. Yeah, I think there was a rule about yeah. that. Yeah, it rule. broke Ezra's heart, and you know Ezra l led them to leave all of their families, which I'm like, oh my goodness, it's like divorce them. Yeah, yeah, that's a heavy call. Oh my goodness. Yeah, righteousness is better. Yeah. Righteousness is better. Well, we were having this conversation the other day. Just talking about Kate and I's relationship, talking about you and Jen's relationship. It's so much better when it's organic and you know beyond a shadow of a doubt. Mm -hmm. Like you are exactly where you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And when you start seeing the pieces come together, and you go, God, this is, this is stupid. I mean, we're sitting here, we're sitting here because we both obeyed we both obeyed the thing that we were supposed to do mm -hmm. stayed on the highway mm -hmm. i mean that's i mean it's it's that it's that picture of god first mm. then your spouse yeah then your kids yeah 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 uh what are the questions we got and i love this one my buddy named carter I'd messaged him a long time ago, chatting it up, talking. Like, hey, if you wanted to know about the next five to ten, what kind of questions would you have? And of you know, all the things that we heard back, he he had some that were like some of the work, work and mm -hmm. happiness, mm -hmm. the balance there, marriage stuff. But he he cut it to a deeper he cut it to a deeper level. And I think kind of what he was doing was he was saying, is my metric right? Because what he asked is, he starts off by saying, happiness is big to me. Happiness is big to me. And not being in a, not being in a family where I saw my mom and my mom and dad being married uh, or, or happy in the relationship. I use happiness as the metric for everything. If I'm happy, it's good. Which I think is, which I think is, I think is, I wouldn't say it's, is, is perfect. I don't think that's a perfect metric because you get into the conversation of happiness or joy or, but I understand that. Mm -hmm. Like I understand that in a, in a, you got to be checking your heart. Yeah, in a personal way, I understand that yeah. what he's, what he's asking. Yeah, because like where you're going with this, that's exactly that's exactly what what I think. So here's what he asked: when it comes to relationships, when it comes to work, when it comes to the work family balance, is happiness a good metric for me to use to navigate my life with? What would you say? I would say that first of all. I have found some momentary happiness mm. that had nothing to do with godly joy. Okay. And it didn't last. And because of that, there are some, there are some calluses there. Mm. There's some scar tissue. Mm -hmm. And 
it took me a, it, it's taken me a while in pursuing God to begin to wrap my head around what godly joy is. Mm. Cause, cause joy and happiness, you know, it's like, it's like Jen and I have a conversation like, like 10 years, 10 years into marriage, you know, we hit the spot where we're, we're, we're in a fuss about something. We're tangled in something, you know, and you know, uh, after, after just processing it for a couple of days, you know, I was like, hon, I'm sorry about this. Let's, let's, let's push to a bigger thing than just making it, you know, than just make it like, I don't mm. want to be old sitting on a porch someday. Like we freaking made it, you know, mm -hmm. like there's got to be more happiness or more joy. It's like, boy, we made it and we had a good time. Mm. And we're laughing and talking about some of those good mm -hmm. times, you know, they all might not have been happy in the, in the, right in the sure. moment, you know, but the, some of that joy and some of that happiness is found in the fight, mm -hmm. you know, does that make sense? Yeah. It makes me think of, makes me think of the weight room a little bit mm. and there's a lot of times I'm not happy to be lifting weights. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been doing it for 30 years. Mm -hmm. I know you can't tell. <laughs> but I've been doing it. Oh, where? where? <laughs> but I've been, I've been in weight yeah. rooms for, yeah. I mean, I mean, close to 30 years. Yeah. I know it's good for me. I'm, it's partly habit. It's, I mean, just, and by weightlifting, I just mean working out. Right. Finding a way to do something. There's a lot of times I don't want to. Like, I'm not one of those guys that's like, man, if I don't do it, I just don't. You know, yeah. like I would love to stop doing it and just eat donuts. Yeah. Just smoke cigarettes all the time. <laughs> you know, it's just, <laughs> you're so dirty. Yeah, just like, I would love to, but I know like, yeah, yeah. I, but there's joy in the fact that I go do these hard things. So, I mean, where I would, where I'd probably start with Carter's is just saying the, you've got to navigate the joy and the happiness, but, but I think you also got to find what you were saying about you and Jen. You have to find meaning somewhere in that because happiness will go away. Yeah. And I can tell you this after being married, Kate and I just celebrated 23 years, 23 years of marriage this month. And I can tell you this, if, if happiness becomes the metric for every single thing you do, there's going to be a lot of years in marriage that are not going to be good years mm -hmm. because marriage isn't always a happy time. Mm -hmm. it's meaningful it's valuable there's a lot of joy in it but it's not always happy mm -hmm. there's some real we've had some real donny brooks you know through the years just trying to figure it out just trying to figure out marriage and so if you go happiness because th then it comes down to this your happiness or her happiness so if you chase happiness and she chases happiness Mm -hmm. It might be something different. Mm -hmm. So hap I think happiness is the byproduct of being able to live in a relationship with somebody and, and do it the way the Bible talks about doing it. Where mm -hmm. as a man, you lead your family and that means you lead them spiritually. That doesn't mean you put your thumb on them, that you're just hammering them. You're, you just, you lead them spiritually. And that means you lead them like Jesus has led you. Has he been patient with you? He'd be patient with her. Yeah. You yeah. know? Uh, and I think that's the, there's a whole lot of, service in there a lot of service a lot of forgiveness yeah a lot of um a lot of uh standing there and and thinking to yourself all right how does jesus deal with me yeah how does he deal with me scripture says he forgives and forgets yeah oh yeah let it go let it go yeah you gotta let it go now that doesn't not, mean not keeping not keeping track of wrongs. It doesn't mean you sweep stuff under the rug. You have yeah. hard conversations. I think I said this line last time we were on. Something I've, I found myself repeating several times in in different uh, marriage counseling conversations with men. Men have to learn the poetry they need to inspire those who live inside their home and be willing to say the hard things. You have to learn the poetry that you need to inspire the people around you. So that, and you also have to be willing to say the hard things and do the hard things. There's decisions as men that we have to make. There's things that we have to do that it's not going to make everybody in the house happy. 
mm-hmm. you know, it's not going to make them happy. I think we talked about this on a previous episode, talking about, you know, I want to tell my family, hey, we're listening to Christian music for 30 days. It's like, they want to, they want to, they want to tear all the statues down. That's what they want to do. <laughs> tear all the statues down. They want to get crazy. Yeah. They want to get crazy with yeah. it. It doesn't make people happy, but but it produces joy, it, and it produces fruit. Yeah, you know, and it produces a whole lot of joy. But it produces yeah. fruit, and we get to move forward. And we learn that we've done something difficult, and that it was okay. And we've separated ourselves from culture a little bit. We didn't get just down the trap, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think that's a big one. I think that's a big one. Um, well, just with that question, I'm just curious. What are some things right now in your life that you find are bringing you the greatest joy mm. right now? I mean, you've been married for 23, 23 years. Mm. You, you have, you know, children in a similar spot as, mm-hmm. as me. We've been married for 20 years. Mm-hmm. Um, what are some of the things that you find right now? That, that bring you the greatest happiness and joy right now. Oh man. But this is sounds so this is sound cheesy, but being able to do this, come and do this with you. Mm. We've talked about how in the world are we ever going to get to work together? We've talked about that for 20 years, mm-hmm. maybe longer. Mm-hmm. And just because of where we are and just because of the jobs that we have, well, we haven't been able to figure that out, but we get to figure it out. Being able to do that. Talking to these guys. I mean, I bumped into Carter at the gym the other day. We had some conversation. And I told him, thank you, man. Thank you so much for, the, like, these, these questions are these questions are mm-hmm. money. You know? That's cool. Check, check this out. I got this letter. Yeah. I got this letter. Um, it, it got handed to me. I put it in my pocket. I got busy. Took off my, you know, changed clothes, whatever, whatever you know. Went through the washing machine. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, look. Look where we're at. You know? Right. And That's kind of cool, though. Old uh, school. Old, old school letter. Wasn't even a letter. text message. wasn't a text message. You know? was wasn't a face-to-face conversation. It was a written letter. Is it a guy you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You give you it know. to you at church? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he walked by me at church. He hugged me and just slipped it into my pocket. How old? 18. Okay. 18. All right. And this is what he said. And, and I'm bringing this up right now because... This is so humbling. Mm. And and I we haven't even had a chance to connect yet. But he said, I, I just want to thank you for everything you've done for me. I appreciate you encouraging me for pretty much my whole life. But especially um, on this trip, this trip that we just took together. He said, uh, you have shown me what real leadership from a man is like. And that's something I'll never forget. Um, traveling together. And talking uh, to you has made me realize how much I need you in my life. I cherish every piece of advice you give me. I felt the need to write you this letter because I want you to be uh, the father figure that I've never had growing up. I realize that I can't do this walk with God alone. And I've been praying about this a lot. And God has been telling me that you are the role model I need and have needed for years. I really appreciate you going out of your way to help me, no matter how big or small the issues or questions are. Thank you again for everything you do. Love you. Gee, man. There's something 18? about 18. There's something about that that is so humbling and mm. filled my heart with some joy and happiness that I can't even explain. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, I feel very broken for him, mm-hmm. you know? Um, yeah, but what about the hope? Yeah. Like, I mean, here's the thing. How many 18-year-old, how many 18-year-old guys are first off going to sit down and, and pour their heart out and say, listen, I'm looking for something. I'm trying to find something. Mm-hmm. I've looked everywhere. Mm-hmm. I've got the world's information on a supercomputer in my pocket mm-hmm. and I can't find anything there mm-hmm. that makes my life, that makes my life have some meaning in it. It's gotta be you, the closest thing that I can find and and it's, and it's you. And I just want you to know I'm following you. I'm following you as you, as you, as you do what you do. Yeah. That's, that's big time. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Super, good for you. super cool. Yeah. That's good. Good for him. Yeah. Good for him. Because you know what? I've done the same things. Mm-hmm. I've done the same things. And 
Um, you mean looking for looking lo for looking for guys? Yeah, and 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 having something inside to press myself to be that transparent uh -huh. and that exposing of my need. Yeah, for for other guys in my life. Yeah, you know, and I I don't know if I would have ever years ago if I'd have ever even thought about. Like that took that, like it's taken a lot of work, mm -hmm. you know, because I know like he didn't write that for no reason. Sure. He wrote that because of what you were talking about earlier with fruit. Yeah. And that hard work. You know? Yeah. Find somebody, find somebody. Yeah. Follow him. What's cool is that like, I mean, he cut himself, he cut himself and bled like we've talked about before. Oh yeah. I can't do this by myself. Yeah. At our church. When we put together men's Bible studies, we base it, who we bring into it is based on two pieces of criteria. <laughs> and we don't announce that there's Bible studies. We don't announce we're doing a men's Bible study based on two pieces of criteria. One, you have to say, I'm struggling. And two, you have to say, I can't do this by myself. And if you can cough up both of those bits, oh, we've got a group for you. Mm -hmm. But until then, I don't have a group for you. Mm -hmm. We don't have a group for you. You come to the end of you. Come to the end of you. You get to the end of you, then we'll talk. But until then, we can't. It's so, no use. So for Jared right now, what's the real happiness? Mm. Let's not let's 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 stay on is Car Carter? Carter, yeah, Car Carter. Let's stay on let's, what is real happiness for you? All right, real happiness for me is this. I was thinking about this on my on my drive over. brought Brooklyn with me this trip mm -hmm. and I'm I'm riding down these dusty trashed out country roads oh it's like powder isn't it <laughs> but listen the powder is not really the problem it's the memories mm -hmm. like there's some places you go that there's like you've just you've been on these roads before mm -hmm. and probably not for good reasons mm -hmm. and I'm riding over here thinking to myself and I'm just grinning like, a, I'm just smiling like an idiot. I'm just smiling like an idiot. <laughs> she looks over at me. And she's like, she made fun of me because I was just like, Phew. I just started laughing. And she's like, Phew. and I glanced over. I was like, and she's like, Whoa. and I'm like, all I could think about was this. I'm on this road right now with my youngest daughter. Get ready to come do another episode with you. Stay the night at the cabin. Hang out with Brooke. See some buddies. Spend some time. And I thought, I didn't know if I would get to this point. Like, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I think what happens sometimes, and I mean, I imagine Carter and I imagine a lot of these other guys have probably felt the same thing too. You look at your life and you go, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I don't know what I'm, I don't know if I'm going to make it. Mm hmm I don't know if I'll ever be able to be happy. I don't know if I'll ever be able to like accomplish, accomplish something like I want to, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it or not. Mm -hmm. And you've got these doubts. Mm -hmm. but what's crazy is that at 46 years old, there's still moments I'm surprised by the fact that my life has turned out like my life's turned out. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm surprised. Like it catches me off guard. It's like, it's like the, I don't know, 12, 13 year old version of me like comes up and taps me on the leg. It's like, yo, is this really our life? Mm -hmm. And I want to turn and look at him and be like, dude, this is really our life. And then he goes, don't think we're ever going to make it here. This is crazy. It's like, there's something empowering about that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's something power. And so I think, I think the things that make me happy now, I'm riding down the road on these same dusty roads I've been up and down a lot of my life. I'm riding with my daughter. We're doing something cool. We're spending time together. And that stuff brings me a whole lot of joy. I'll tell you what else brings me a whole lot of joy. A whole lot of joy. Mixing it up with the number of young men who've just floated back in and around my life. You know, And it's funny to say because I feel like I'm 25 years old. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like I'm 25 years old. 
but I'm at that place now to where some of these, some of these young men that have circled back into my life and I'm seeing them and I'm like, we're not really friends. We're like, you're looking for something. And dude, there's so much joy in that when it gives me hope for the future. You know, yeah. you look at the political, you look at the, the political climate that we're in. You look at where culture is. You look at all that stuff and you think, dude, I, fe I fear for my kids. Are they going to have any idea how to navigate how weird this world is? And the only thing that's going to put this thing together is if there's going to be men who follow Jesus, we'll be fine. If there's men who follow Jesus, we'll be fine. But if you, I mean, if you watch too much TikTok, you watch too much Instagram, you watch too much TV. You'll find out real quick. It's like you you'll you'll feel like there's not like there's there's no it's it's over mm -hmm. it's over we lost. But like the letter or some of the questions from yeah it's lost or anything that I do is so insignificant. Yeah, it's a drop it in the bucket. You're not making a bit of difference it anywhere. You know. So what brings me a ton of joy is that spending time with my wife these days. Listen, I wish somebody would have said that to me. The the sweeter part of the years happens later. Mm -hmm. Like it's fun in the beginning. It's exciting. I, I told Jen the other day, I said, I know this is so weird, but I, I think I love you more now than I did when we got engaged. So that's why I told and Brooke. She, and she's like, I don't understand. Like, that's she so gets funny. it. Yeah. She's like, but why? She, she's like, why? And I was like, I, I just do. The the work yeah. that we've done, the things that yeah, we've yeah, experienced, the, the depth that we've gone together. Yeah. The scars. Yeah. The trials, yeah. the laughs, the all the stuff. It's like you build that out. If you can stack you can yeah. stack some years of that. Dude. Dude, it's fun. Then it gets a lot it, then it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's a whole lot of fun. There's a question we skipped over. Okay. Last week. And I've been thinking about this and I wanted to I wanted to tell I wanted to tell you this story and I'm, I wanted to tell it. Drake said he was thinking about being baptized or he was at least thinking about baptism. And this is Drake from, I don't know if it's, we talked about two episodes ago or last episode, thinking about being baptized. And I think the question was something like, what are the things I need to be praying about or What's the best way for me to understand baptism? And so I, so I was thinking about this, and so I, I want to give you this. I want to give you this scenario because to me, this is cool. This is this is such a good, such a good, such a good uh, illustration. Of this for me, I see baptism, I see salvation, heaven and hell through this lens. Let's say my youngest daughter, Brooklyn. Um she finds out that you have a bad heart okay you got a bad ticker and she comes to me and she says hey uh uncle jb uncle jb's got a bad heart and i want to give him mine and so listen i love you to pieces but the answer is no like you're not listen uncle jb uncle jb's heart's in the condition it was in because Listen, this dude, he because he wasn't running for a right, long time. Right, right, right. <laughs> he wasn't on a carnivore right, diet for right. a long time. Like this is, this is yeah. so he made his choices. I feel bad for him, but you ain't doing it. And she says, It's what I'm here for. And I go, No, it's not. You're in my house. There's no way. And then she says, Listen, I want to give him my heart. Jesus talked to me last night. He told me, I need to give my heart to JB so that he can live. If she said that, do you, she better come with some serious weight on it. It better be some, mm. it better be a real good story because I, because I ain't biting. But let's say I do. Okay. You believe that this is what the Lord wants to do. Use your heart inside of that man. And so what you're going to do is you're going to trade hearts. She's going to get your beat up, decrepit. And she's going to put it in her. They're going to put it in her. And then she's going to take her heart and they're going to put it in you. You get this brand new, vibrant, you know, 350 pound squat, just all heart, all laughter. And she's, she's funny. I mean, you, you get all this joy, all this. I mean, the, I mean, she's a bag of tricks and hilarious. And now she's going to walk around with your decrepit, you know, how old are you? 42. 42 year old heart inside her 17 year old body. 
I can tell you this right now. I'm going to be by her side until she passes, which will probably be soon if she hears you got a bad ticker. But I can promise you this. When she's gone, you know where I'm going to be? I'm going to be right in the middle of you. I'm moving. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move into your house. You know, I'm going to sleep at night. I'm going to sleep beside you in your Don't bed. Don't you be eating that. Don't you be <laughs> acting exactly like that. exactly right. You go to bed early. Exactly you take care right. of that part. They're like, hey, Jared, you want to go get some cigars? No, you ain't smoking. Yeah. You done smoking cigars. Hey, Jared, can we, uh, you want to go get a double cheeseburger? <clears throat> no, you're not getting a double yeah. cheeseburger. You know what you're yeah. going to do? You're not getting no breads. You're not getting no ketchup. You're not getting no nothing. You can drink water. You'd be like, hi, hey, have you had this new uh, white gummy bear rain? Like, no, you're not drinking <laughs> that. It's like, it's pineapple. It's like, no, it's not. It's not for you. You don't get that. You're not messing with that because the sacrifice that was made for that is way too, way too important. And you're going to honor it. It's what you're going to do. And I'm going to be sure of it. And I'm going to be, I mean, I'm going to, I'm set right beside you. Everything you do. Now, listen, here's the thing. If you treat it with respect and you make them, you make your life a memorial of who she is and what she's done in her life, dude, it's like this. If somebody texts me and they say, hey, can I talk to you? I say, sure. And I meet them up at the church. And they come up and they say, hey, can, I, can I visit with you? I say, sure. I say, what's your name? I say, oh, my name's whatever. I just want to come by and tell you thank you. Thank you? Why? Well, I just want to tell you thank you. I was stranded on the side of the road. And JB came by and he helped me out. Oh, well, why don't you tell JB thank you? Because I told JB thank you. And JB said, you need to go tell Jared, thank you. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Well, well, listen, I was I was in trouble, trouble, and he, he took care of me. Mm -hmm. Somebody else comes up, knock on the door, open it up. Somebody somebody stand on my stoop. Can I help you? Yeah. Uh, are you Jared? Yeah, I'm Jared. I just want to come tell you thank you. For what? Well, my kids were in trouble. Um, there was a lot going on in my family. Their dad walked out. This kind of situation unfolded. It was a bad deal. And JB stepped into my son's life and made a world of difference. And I came to him and I said, I just, I just want to tell you, thank you so much. And he goes, don't thank me. He said, go thank Jared. Mm -hmm. And I go, wow. And then before that person gets off the stoop, somebody else shows up on the stoop and then they walk off. And then somebody else shows up and they got, they, everybody who shows up, everybody I bump into is just like, hey, on behalf of everything, I just want to tell you, thank you. For what? JB told me to tell you thank you. And every single time I turn around, somebody's bringing your name up in front of me. Here's what's crazy about that. In some way, you've taken the biggest, ugliest black mark that's in my life, the loss of a child, and you somehow made it wonderful mm -hmm. with your actions and what you've done with it. You may have even amplified what it was going to do. Yeah. You took it places that it was never going to be able to go on its own. That's. I would come to you and I would say, what, what else can I give you? Because it doesn't seem to matter. Whatever it is you're given, you just take it and you go turn it into something else. You use it on somebody else. You use it as a cheater pipe of some sort and you get the most leverage through everything you touch, everything you do, everything that you set your mind to just becomes. The, the most perfect, wonderful thing. And then whatever you do shows up on my porch. Mm. Dude, I'll give you anything I have. You need more? You need money? You want my house? You want my car? You want my... I'll give you every single thing. I think that's a picture of what God does with us. He gave us his son. And then what he does is he says, I'm going to give my... I'm going to take my spirit. I'm going to put it in you. You're going to have the very life of Jesus Christ living inside of you. Now, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to turn your life into a memorial of Jesus? Mm. I think to me, that's what baptism is. And if I could take it a little further, I would say this. If you want to know what hell is, I'll tell you what I think hell would be like and why it is that I believe in hell at least. Because if my daughter gave up her heart to save your life and then all you did was piss it away, I'll warn you once. I'll warn you once. I might warn you twice. Justin, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. I catch you drinking beers and smoking cigarettes, eating freaking cheesy burgers, <laughs> getting sloppy with it. Yeah. 
Listen, if I keep hearing that you're out just doing whatever you want to, being selfish with what with this gift that you've been given, I got no problem. No problem. I gave up the greatest thing I have. I got no problem looking you in the face and saying, I'm going to take this hand. I'm going to shove it inside of your body. I'm going to take back what belongs to me. Mm. You're not going to wreck what my daughter did. You're not going to do it. I will take back what belongs to me. I think that's part of the reason that hell is not a problem for me. Like I, when I think about, well, why would God send somebody to hell? That's why I would. That's exactly what I would do. I would reach in, take a hold of, to me, baptism is that picture of you submitting to what it is God wants you to do. He made a sacrifice for you. He made a, he made a huge sacrifice for you. And then what you do is you submit yourself to him. Like whatever it is, you're willing to forgive my sins, erase the slate, knowing good and well what I am in secret and what I am in public. And you're going to erase the slate. You're going to let me start over. Yeah. Okay. What do you want? What do you want from me? If you could take it a step further, it'd be this. As Christians, I think part of our job is this, is that we go about doing good deeds in the lives of other people. And those are the things that begin to plant the seeds and open up these conversations that bring people to Christ. And then God, before his throne on a regular basis, there's these people that are coming up and saying, you know, if you made that difference in Jared's life, could you make that difference in my life? If you made that difference in Justin's life, could you make that difference in my life? And if your name is going up in front of the throne before the Lord on a regular basis, there's not going to be that conversation where Jesus says, away from me, I never knew you. Oh, it's like, oh, I know you. I've been hearing about you. I've been hearing about you over and over. People don't stop singing your song. People don't stop saying your name. To me, that's what that picture of baptism is. It's you submitting to what God has done for you. And you are taking on, you are taking on something that is, it's going to make, it's going to make the most difference in your life. It's going to make the most difference in everybody's life mm -hmm. around you. And I think there's going to be this, this moment where God goes, that's my guy. I know him. I've been hearing about Drake from all these people for this whole time. People have been talking about him over and over. Everywhere he goes, there's somebody, somebody new is showing up and they're like, hey, I know you don't know me, God, but I'm a friend of Drake's. Yeah. You know? And to me, that's something cool. So I wanted to make sure we had that conversation. Yeah. It's about such a cool picture of submitting and accepting. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. These are good ones. These are good ones. And these are good dudes. I, I can't, I would love to get that. I would love to get that, that crew of guys. Yeah. Uh, down this way or, or have you come up and, and oh, yeah, let's do it. some, just some cool cats, man. Just, and it's kind of neat because, uh, there's so many young, just good conservative dudes. And I'm not, I'm not talking like, like politically conservative. Right, right. I just mean guys that have looked up and looked at the culture and was like, dude, I'm not trying to be in this. They just want to know some truth. Yeah. I just want truth. Yeah. I don't, don't show me another, don't show me another YouTube short. Don't show me another yeah. real. I just want, give me something real. I just want something very, very, very authentic, mm -hmm. you know? So I would, I would love for you to, I would love for you to come meet these cats sometime. Just, 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 uh, what else? What else we need to talk about? Uh, I don't know, man. It's about time to eat some steak or something. It is about that time. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's time to eat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, very cool. Uh, let me pray. Okay. Let's and do it. We'll, uh, we'll close out. And... Let's do it. Appreciate you. Yeah. Appreciate you. Yeah. You're working good together in these conversations. Yeah, you're a good one. Let me pray. God, thank you so much for everything you've done for us. Thank you so much for uh, all the guys that are listening to this and, and gals that are listening to this. Yeah. We'll pray that you will uh, continue to work in their lives. God, we know that just a couple of knuckleheads uh, who've, uh, who are just, getting together and having some fun and having some conversations. Uh, but Lord, we, we strive, we strive for something to be meaningful out of this. Pray that you will bring that same kind of meaning, that same kind of purpose and that joy into the lives uh, of these guys and these gals that, that are able to sit and listen to this. But we love you. Thank you so much for our families. Thank you so much for the jobs that we have and the uh, freedom that we have to be able to do something like this. Thank you so much for Justin and uh, what he means to me and our friendship through the years. We love you. It's in Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 Appreciate it, brother. Yeah, you too. Good morning.